How's everyone doing today? Welcome to week nine. Week nine, we have a couple different things to do this week. So I want to go over each of the components to make sure that uh, you're successful in what we're looking for. Because I really want to see everyone do well. So for this week, you're going to focus on, you have the unit nine assignment and the discussion board. Now with the assignment, it's going to be looking at, oh, I'm sorry, I should say this. For next week, you're going to have your paper due. For the paper, make sure that you focus on APA formatting. That's the big component that a lot of people are missing. And what I've seen in the past, an APA formatting consists of a title page, a reference page, and in-text citations. So that should be the big focus of your analysis is those specific use of APA formatting to really develop your work. And I think if you can do that, I think you can be fine because a lot of people struggle with the APA formatting. If you want me to pre-grade your paper, just let me know. Also with that discussion board, make sure to focus on an in-text citation and reference in APA formatting. But for this week, we're going to look at the government and the role of fiscal policy in our economy. When we look at fiscal policy, we're more focused on the role of discretionary fiscal policy, which is looking at how the, how the government influences both taxes and government spending to stabilize the direction of our economy. And when we look at it, you're going to notice that the government has two different things that they can employ the use of government spending changes and the use of tax cuts. Those fluctuations will lead to changes in our economy and it will lead to more stabilization policy. And what I mean by stabilization policy is the economy could actually grow too fast. And if it grows too fast, the government would want to try to find ways to slow the economy down. On the other hand, the government could actually, the, the economy could actually grow too slow. And if it was to grow too slow, the government could actually institute policies to slow it down. When you look at discretionary policies, you can either do expansionary or contractionary policies. Expansionary policies is when the government's trying to stimulate the economy to produce more. Examples of expansionary policies would be something like decreasing taxes, putting money into consumers' hands, or increasing government spending. All of those are injecting money into our economy to actually bring about spending changes. Now, contractionary spending is looking at when the government starts to slow down their level of spending. They slow down the level of spending or they increase taxes, which allows for people to not have as much money to spend on various things. Now, when you look at this week, you're going to notice a couple different changes. First is you're going to look at like figure 24-1 and the circular flow diagram and looking at the government. You notice that the government also spends money on goods and services and they also provide a channel for where taxes are brought into the government, but that's from households. So it's kind of challenging because when you're looking at it, it's like households are paying taxes, which is revenue for the government to spend. But when the economy goes into recession, you'll notice that the spending levels will actually start to decrease and the government actually receives less revenue. Now, when they receive less revenue, they're not able to spend as much money, which is the challenge. And if they're not able to spend as much money, that's going to cause issues for other components. Now, next thing we're going to look at is when the government's in a budget deficit and when it's in a budget surplus. A budget deficit is when the government actually has more spending than the money they bring in, tax revenue they bring in for that year. While as a budget surplus is where the government actually brings in more tax revenue than they spend. You'll notice in our economy we have a lot of budget deficits. And these budget deficits cause a lot of issues in our economy with regard to spending. We don't know what the appropriate spending should be. So in your analysis, put in that budget deficit, budget surplus. I think you'll like that. I think that'll add a little bit of flair to your analysis to try to understand where the economy is going. 
If you have any questions, let me know. But I look forward to your effort this week.